Hello, everyone. I'm Linda Nickel, and welcome to another session of the Happiness Hour. My goal here is to help us all connect, inspire, and create. We're here live on Zoom every Wednesday night with a new topic and a guest speaker that shares their photography expertise with us. On Tuesdays, please check out the list of upcoming presentations on my Instagram page at Cousin Linda and in more detail on my website at lindanickel.com which is where you'll find our previous sessions linked to the Happiness Hour YouTube channel. Erin Randall is my trusty little cohort and she is sitting in Montana tonight. Um, so say hello, Miss Erin. Hello, Miss Erin, or, you know, I probably should say something more festive, but it is cold, so I'll let it go. <laughs> All right, so our guest tonight is Danny Avedic. A travel addict who has a million fun travel photos and stories of his travel experiences. And Danny's creative visual storytelling shines in his travel videos because they invite viewers to immerse themselves in a virtual adventure. In tonight's session, Keeping the Passion Alive, Travel Filmmaking, Danny is going to talk about the challenges of filming video and photography in chaotic environments. He'll share some of his video tips and techniques to help you keep an audience engaged in your own videos. Danny, so I've been following you for a while on Instagram and I don't know you, uh, I mean, I met you for the first time over Zoom on Sunday night. So, um, you know, while we were visiting to prepare for tonight, I'm, I'm gonna be honest, I felt like I'd known you forever. And we were just old friends sitting there catching up and trading travel stories. And it was just, for me, a fun conversation. And I, I, I know that you don't usually do presentations, but when I asked you to do it, you, you jumped and said, love to. And for, and for that, I'm very appreciative. And I'm very excited because again, this is another one of those selfish sessions that we're gonna have to kind of teach me what I need to know. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to you. The daunting mic change. Um, <laughs> thank you. Thank you for having me today. Um, of course I do it. Yeah, now meeting you is uh, one of the fewer organic Instagram friends that I said, oh yeah, this is a good person. Like, you get a lot of messages about, you know, this photo spot or this. You never really had this like uh, clingy message. You're just an honest person asking for like, how are you today? Like, oh, it's nice to meet you. It's always fun. Um, I agree. I feel like I've, I've known you much longer than two Zoom chats. Right. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I guess I'll just jump into me for a second. Yeah. So I don't forget to, otherwise I'll, I'll segue away. Um, as she said, I've traveled a lot and a lot of it's been really hard. <laughs> um, I did a lot of backpacking and not in the Europe sense. I did it in America first because I had this weird idea that America had enough backpacking ability and trains and buses and cheap routes to get around. And I found out I was wrong for a few years because it got really, really expensive. Uh, and then I figured it out is you just have to have no I don't know, sense of comfort or discomfort level. You just got to be okay to go with it. And, and, and that sort of taught me a lot of what I'm sort of going to talk about today, which is making sure you're still excited about what you're doing once you hit your ends. You know, a lot of people still keep their mindset of, I'm going to do well in it. I tend to do all right in it and just keep thriving through it. So it, it's a middle ground some people want, want to hit. Uh, and, and going through with you on it, I, I actually struggle hardest is finding somewhere to go shoot. And it was insane how many places you have been that I have been, but to different locations within it, including my own city of Chicago, where you were shooting spots I hadn't been to yet. And I was kind of like, how the hell did you figure that out before me? Um, and that's the fun I guess I still have in it. Uh, yeah, and that's, and that's because I'm not afraid to ask strangers for help. And I, yeah, <laughs> I mean, most of the people here is, you know, I've met them through Instagram and I reel them in and the next thing you know, I'm gonna be in Pennsylvania and I'm gonna have places to stay because, you know, people are friendly and, I don't think that started with Instagram. I can tell it's sort of one of those things you probably had that prior to a social platform. I don't you know, know, if you go and travel, do you meet people or do you go and travel and watch things happening around you? you I, I imagine you yeah. meet people. 
I travel to, I collect people. When I go to Europe, that's my hobby is I collect Europeans. I, yeah. love, <laughs> I love talking to strangers. I think a, a short conversation with a stranger is, it, it can go really bad and it could go great where I'm gonna be friends with them forever. But those times when it's bad, those are stories that I still talk about, you know? That's, that's sort of the point of it is, is the suffering of the moment isn't always that bad in the long run. Right. So while, while you're sitting there and you showed up to a place you were hoping to shoot and you got all the way across Europe to get to and then it starts raining, and you know, I can't find a shot, it's wet, I don't wanna ruin my gear, what do I do? And you go out to go shoot a coffee shop that day. And, yeah. and I have a little edit to show everyone a little later, just so I, this isn't just a, a preaching platform, I'll show a little video work as well. Um, primarily because you posted a video uh, on Instagram and I looked at it and I was like, oh, she's got to fix a few things and it'd be awesome. And that's all I think about. And I, I hope everyone in the chat can take in a nice way of tell me if I'm wrong. <laughs> um, I'd rather learn with you opposed to just be the guy talking up front. The second your cameras went off, the nerves hit. Oh, it's very easy to see faces, but now it's talking. Remember to tell jokes again? Remember to tell jokes again? No, 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 don't go back there. Has, no. has the chat ever heard any of her jokes? Because they're amazing. <laughs> well thought out, strategic jokes. <laughs> wow, that's a stress. That's a yeah. travel story right there. Big <laughs> All right, back to back to back to what I want to learn. Okay, so, um, so to, it still comes back out of sort of the how I started doing video is where the ethos of of enjoying video and travel and and documenting comes from. Is I, I started skateboarding when I was a very young kid. I mean, like fifth grade, I was skateboarding. A neighbor down the block owned a skate shop. It was the coolest thing to do. And then everyone started filming skateboarding in the, the late 90s, early 2000s. And it was the time that I just picked up my dad's VHS dad cam and bought a, I don't know, $20 fisheye screw and you just run around and shoot people. You know, you're running around the skateboard and nothing ever's made, no editing's ever done. And I look back at these tapes and it's like, man, these are awesome memories that look horrible. I'd never want to watch again. So my approach to video sort of took over from that thought was like, man, home videos suck. Like I, I would hate to like go and show my kids in 40 years, like here's a really crappily put up collage of whatever I did over a five year pace on a little dad cam. So I bought a really little camera and I, and I had a Windows Movie Maker and I would just go and record any like party I was going to in the city, skateboarding around with friends still. And then started traveling a crap ton about like 12 years ago. I got really sick of Chicago. I had done it a bunch. And I started just moving out camping more. I uh, hadn't camped in like seven or eight years after Boy Scouts in high school or whatever I was in where I stopped and I just became a city person. Um, but then I started camping more. And as I started camping more, I was like, man, I want to show this more. I want to show and my friends. Like, what are you doing? I'm like, well, I go start a fire. And they're like, that sounds boring. It's like, no, but it's the other stuff. They're like, what other stuff? Like, I can't explain it. So I just started bringing a camera to start showing them what I wanted to have them come and do opposed to, I was ever going to take a photo or video. Like I was doing it more for, I want you to see what I'm doing opposed to I want to do something to show you. I don't know if that makes any sense. It does to me, yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> I'm following you because I, 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 like I said, I'm new to video and there's so many people that do it really well. And so I've actually made myself think about it before I actually hit the button, so. Well, it's, it's really easy once you get like a few key rules that I have for you tonight, primarily just for you. Everyone else, I apologize you're here. There's a solo conversation with the corner box lady of Linda. I mentioned she's somewhere in here. Yeah. Right here. Um, never film this way unless you're going to edit it this way. If you always turn it this way, it always works. I've always, I've had like, I'd say three years of, oh, I'm gonna take my videos and oh, I'll use these if they work and I try and do crops, I try and do stuff, but you can never make it look good. And not like it looks bad, but it's like the upsetting, I can't ever get it to fit my screen pull yeah. up. And, yeah. and I can tell, is it, do you have Final Cut or Premiere? No. Do you I, have I, iMovie? I have iMovie, because I, I don't tell. know. Yeah. Because they don't let you export to that format to where it'll just fill up a story screen. 
Well, um, I'm, I'm ready for you to inspire me to jump up to like a premiere or something else. Well, it, it works for you is that I'm one of the cheapest human beings alive. Okay. To the Yay. point where I'm wearing free clothes that I got from people who own businesses that give me shirts. Um, don't go and buy those programs yet. Okay. Go and buy like the uh, free Adobe uh, app on your phone. And what you can do is you can edit it out your way and then go and crop it on your phone in that program and then post it. In the, 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 it'll probably be the same quality you'd want. You're not like, so Instagram or any of that stuff, you don't need 4K crazy quality. Anyone that does, it's cool, but it's unnecessary. You know, I, I really shoot in 1080 for the most part still. I shoot 4K, it's room in 1080 editing. So if you go and put it onto your phone, you know, there's free apps you can go and resize on your phone because they know you want to add it on your story. So that, that was like the main thing is like shoot for your edit. And that's the hardest thing people, the hardest thing for me to realize was like, if I just go out and I used to just grab the camera and I'd go shoot everything. Like, oh, look at that, look at that, look at that, look at that, look at that. And then I started thinking, okay, I'll stop stare. I'll start looking at it. Oh, okay, cool, and I'll start looking at it. And I started slowing down. As I slowed down, it got better, but still I was just like pointing the camera. So the key is know what you're gonna edit with what the footage is. And if you don't know what the footage is gonna edit as, shoot it so everything works together. And the video edit I have today is sort of that scenario where I, I failed a trip, it didn't come out with enough video, but for Instagram's sake or for social media's sake, I could easily make a video out of a you know, morning of hell because it was a horrible story that I'm gonna talk about. It was a, like a really bad morning, but the video came out okay. Um, even though I thought it never would because it's been sitting on a hard drive until earlier today when I took it off and said, maybe I'll do this for tonight. And it worked out. Um, that's, that's the key to the video. Outside of that, editing, the advice is keep it short. My, right now, I've lost four or five of these Zoom people already. They're either diddling with something over here or doing something else because I'm, I'm talking for way too long of a time. Um, same thing goes with any type of video. When you're, when you're looking at a video, you don't need banger shots for every shot, if that makes sense. It, it you, does, but we forget that because we want we think that it's supposed to be full of banger shots. But it is it supposed is to be full of banger shots, but that's like impossible. That's like a Sports Illustrated swimsuit model mentality is like, oh, I have to be this. It's like, no, that's the goal, but you don't need all banger shots if you think about how I can edit some of these shots together. Okay. Well, I'm going to help you feel a little bit better. Uh, Mika says she's still here, and so is Gil. So. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, so, and Susan Upton, who's down in South Texas, says she's still here. So, yeah. And she's Susan, like, free, free is good. Free is good, she says. Oh, all right. free, is, free is the way to go, and I'm going to preach Final Cut Pro all night long because you only buy it once. Uh, I don't think it's some superior programming that you know i should oh you never use this one or never use that one no th this is just a great tool that you never have to buy again it's just always updating always great okay um i'm I, i've been trying to go a different route if i can because i want to leave apple because that limits me right now on how much i could spend on a computer um they're expensive but they work well so but so free stuff same goes with this easy video making. There's so much on Final Cut that's free. This does not a Final Cut plug corporately. This is just saying you can get so much free stuff that's just gonna be a, a, a transition that's gonna help you out. I prefer to not use transitions because I suck at them. Uh, that, that's like the best explanation. I, if I was better at them, I'd probably do them a lot. The majority of stuff I'm like, oh, I don't do that. You know, it's probably because I suck at it. <laughs> I gotta be honest with it. So when I shoot my video, I have that in mind. And that's like the key is like, don't rely on, I'm gonna do a really cool transition for this shot. I make the transition with my camera as much as possible. Because I'm, I'm gonna, more of an operator than I am an editor. Before I let it go too long, Final Cut is an app or is Only it? Only for Apple, yes. Final Cut Pro 10, it's got okay. an X Roman numeral. It's, um, it's their video editing software. It's $300 or $400. I, I'm, I bought it two computers ago, so I don't know, but it's an app in the Apple store. So if you get a new computer, it works. If we're recording this to send it out to the interwebs, I won't tell you the workaround to where you can have it on every one of your computers, but mm -hmm. there's a, it's a great program. It's uh, iMovie Plus is how I used to describe it because I started on iMovie when I got an Apple computer and I did it for years, everything on iMovie. 
So that's why I know most of the. Oh, so, um, it that's for Apple users. So what about people that are not on Apple products? If you don't want to use Premiere, um, I can't vouch for anything, even Premiere, because again, I don't use it because I suck at it. Um, <laughs> I've tried, and I just don't put the time into it because Final Cut's so pragmatic. Okay. Um, DaVinci Resolve is supposed to be on the up and up. It's another flat fee program that you're going to get forever on your computer. And it's an industry standard for a lot of black magic's work and stuff like that. But I don't have a backing for it because I've never really successfully used it, if that makes sense. And we've got somebody that that's one of my shooting partners says, and it's free. <laughs> yeah. And, and that's exactly, um, it's free unless you want the full blown version, which you don't need. Yeah. Um, a lot of it, and it allows you to do more customization than Final Cut, and it's not a bad product. I, I, I'd be honest, I would go follow Rob and ask Rob if he uses it. He'd probably <laughs> be able to tell you much more about Resolve than me okay. if you're on a PC. Yeah, so uh, that, yeah. it's not Rob Kuvis that we're talking about. This is my uh, Rob Pluto 911. That's his yes. Instagram. So yay for me because he's one of my, uh, yeah, he's one of those people I text when I can't figure out something. So yay, okay. That's the way to go. Like I said, if you have if you have a connection of someone who uses it, okay. or this awesome YouTube thing, it's the way to go. Uh, the downside I've found to to resolve is what I've been told at least, and in, in my research, Rob might be able to attest to it or not, is a lack of third party plugins right now because it's a newer program. Um, it's not bad, but it's dwarfed by Premiere or Final Cut's third party and just like customer made presets. You can get very cheap or free. Okay. But yeah, editing software, don't rely on it. You don't need it unless you're getting really deep into it. I would say before you go too deep and I'm going to start editing crazy, start chopping up video like how I'm going to show you today and then start working on the deeper stuff because then you're going to start shooting four shots. Um, it's really built, not the same user base. As, uh, yeah, exactly. It's a little smaller still, but it's again a powerhouse from what I'm told. Okay, so that covers the Apple users and the non-Apple users. Okay. Now but going back into video, um, me doing video, I have stopped doing it quite a few times, but never really stopped. But I found myself getting caught up with other stuff instead of video. So the, uh, the Instagram hole of I need to shoot a portrait photo that fits to Instagram standards took over my life for quite a few years. And that one was brutal because then it took me away from doing video. And I, I, I have a few like gap years that I never finished editing because I didn't shoot them with the same mentality that I used to, which was to edit opposed to they were photos. Um, and that being said, it's different than shooting a photo because a photo, sometimes you're looking for just straight still. In video, you're doing the same sometimes, but most of the time you're looking for the movement. And the movement is not your camera. It's something in front of it. And that's the hard thing to find. If you don't have something moving in front of you, how do you make movement look good? And we're all trying to figure that one out still. That's like the number one question. But what I've found is your foreground's got to have something. If, you, if you're just shooting right here at your eye level, like a, in skateboarding, we call that a dad cam. Um, it's like you're at a soccer match. You're saying, go get it, Billy. And you're zooming in and out and you're watching whatever's happening around. It's bouncing. That's only cool for certain stuff. Um, if you can do it with your camera, like you're taking a photo, but you're finding the movement, it now is like you're just pretty much shooting a photo book, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna jump into editing a little bit to show you a workflow on Final Cut and what I do that are simple, easy fixes for video. And then we can move into some other stuff. Okay. Um, so I gotta share a screen here, which is a thing. It's the this. yep green button down on the bottom. There you go. So I would lie to you and say that I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just gonna go from anywhere. But I did this today um, to make it quicker because the longest time is usually scrubbing through my footage. Can you guys see my final cut right now? I can. Yes, I'm seeing something. Yeah. Okay. Um, so there's no video going right now. I have it all down in here. Um, okay. As you can see, so it shows me what I've already selected in a different project, okay. which is one of these test projects I had up above. Okay. So. I'm just gonna go and pull them out how I had them. Uh, it'll save time, so I'm not trimming as much. But I, I have a couple that I do have to trim because I didn't pull them in right. Um, so when I show you that, it'll sort of make sense. So the first thing 
I broke my number one rule I tend to do with video or photo is this is from June of this year. Uh, it was a COVID road trip, avoiding every city we could until we got to here. And I drove 28 hours straight from Florida to here with a whole bunch of detours to go around cities because we were trying to just avoid everything. So when I got to this town, it's a national park in Arkansas. I don't know if anyone's ever been there at Hot Springs. So Hot Springs, I've never been here. It is a tiny national park. I found out it's one of the few national parks that's just literally city for the majority of it, um, but it has a crazy history. Uh, we found that out in the morning when I did all this video but we pulled in here at 3 a.m. and we tried to stay in a hotel that used to be a casino. It looks like this building, but it's down the block. It's a different building. And we were just really sketched because it looked like a ghost town and everything was kind of run down. You had to pay for separate parking. It, was, it had a lot of security cameras saying, don't keep your stuff in your car. And we had an entire van full of summer gear for camping in Yellowstone. And we had recently gone on a trip and had our entire vehicle stolen with every piece of gear clothing, except for a phone, wallet, and what's on our back in St. Louis. So we had sort of that same feel of like, we're about to get robbed. This is going to suck. So we bailed on the hotel, went to a campground. It was full. And we ended up sleeping for like an hour and a half in the front seat of the van in a parking lot at a picnic area. And then the sun came up. So we figured, let's get out of town. And instead, we stopped and we figured we'd walk around out here. But I'm in like mental anguish. for. I, I drove the entire 28 hours. Um, we had some horrible weather we drove through out of Florida all the way through Alabama and just drove through the night. It was brutal. Zero sleep. And I'm like, it's midday or at least the sun's up sort of in a bad spot. I'm not going to get anything good. I also don't, I was hoping to find nature at a national park. There's very little nature where I was at. Um, and I never looked at this footage because I just figured it was all a loss. That's the biggest problem is I tend to look at footage as a loss and never go to it on the editing board. And today I figured out I kind of like all this stuff and I want to make an edit out of it after I did this. So I'll probably end up posting this video to my Instagram in the next like day or so once I polish it up. But the key is to go to your stuff right away. Um, once you start shooting towards an edit, you start remembering, oh, I shot this shot and that shot to work together. Oh, this one goes with this one. I shot three shots to establish and show the bigger picture of this. Um, and I would have forgot all of that had I not looked at it. These are all the shots I took. There's only 16 clips. They're all very short, very handheld shaky. I shot them on an A7S Mark I Sony camera, and I had no image stabilization. It's nice and crazy. It's not a high frame rate. It's hard to kind of make work if you're not sitting on a tripod or editing smooth shots. So I had to find a lot of smooth shots. That was the hard part. Um, but I did that before I came in here, so it's not as long. Um, but so I, I just pull them in, and they're already short. This is the, like a, a main thing I focus on when I'm going to edit, is this one seems a little long already, because it's three seconds. I like to stick with like one to two second clips or divisible by two. And what that helps me with is most songs sort of go that route. Um, if you clip a, clip a beat to a song, you're probably going to be not in a three. You're not going to be in five. You're going to be in two or four or six or eight. Um, so that's something that I, I, I was never told. I just sort of figured on my own. I don't know if it's a standard or if it's a nice thing to do. I just do it. So I, I, I sort of live by that rule of like, keep them short. Um, and as I pull them all in here, you see that like some of these I didn't like. It was just a reshot. So like, don't blow it. This one we really thought was going to be cool. This was steam coming out of a drain because there's a hot spring flowing all underneath the town through these water fountains and stuff. And the shots suck. So I just moved on. And, and that's like one of the harder things to do is constantly move on from shots that suck, even if you hope they came out. Um, shots can be bad. Don't make them work if you don't have to. Just make it a shorter video with the good stuff. Um, and after I go and pull all the clips I need in, they're all in order chronologically from when I shot them usually I like to keep my videos that way because I'm, I'm usually doing kind of a travel thing. And if I do it that way, um, I usually am shooting it as I'm going and hoping everything's in the right order. So then that works out. Um, but once they're in the timeline, I, it's a lot easier to go scrub through them. Let me turn off the audio scrub for you guys' ears sake. Um, 
So this shot's nice, a little establishing. It just gives you a little video of a sun flaring. Trick to video, shoot the sun a lot. If you don't like the sun, don't. But I love these little flares in the middle. I, I can't point. I guess I can. Yeah. These flares are like, I don't know, the best thing in the world to me in video. I probably overuse them. But they, they do well when they get really hot. And then you can find another clip and do the same thing with it, and it works out. So like... Take for, so this, this is the shot I would put with it. This one here would come out of that one. So I'm starting to move the camera down, just a slow down, and then you start pulling right. As it starts pulling right, I have another right clip coming out and with a solar flare. So now they're not in the same spot. It just sort of flashes. People go and use that as a way to edit by putting a flash as a transition. You can just use it in your camera. It saves you a bunch of time here because I don't like using transitions because I don't do them well. <laughs> I do this better. So, so as this one plays through, you know, it kind of flashes into the next one. And then I have a foreground that pulls it in. These are just two buildings in the sun. I don't really know how else to make them look good, except for this. Um, and they're not that great. This one says Ozark. So this is my establishing shot. That's where I thought I was, was the Ozarks. Hot Springs is part of it, I believe. Tell me if I'm wrong in the chat. I was only there in a daze for like six hours. And then I moved on. Um, this one, I don't know where it would work in here, so I just get it at the end. Um, this one, I don't really like this shot. I get rid of it. And this one's her drinking water. So these are out of continuity in my sense. Um, in chronological order, she went and drank this. I went and looked at this river, and then we went and saw this water again. That's not good for the video, so it doesn't matter about making it safe for, oh, this happened. That, that's minimal to me. Um, but I, I have a big thing about keeping it kind of true to what I did. If I try and cheat everything into different times, sun's different. I don't know. I'm one of those guys that looks at a movie and says like, oh, that wasn't right. The cup's in the wrong hand. Like, I don't want people catch me in that as much. <laughs> um, but I do it still. But so I have one, two, no one moves up into her. That works. So you see the little camera movements were shakes. I didn't mean these, but it works for a little transition into the movement up with that camera. So that one's an editing. So I'm scrubbing for that one. That one's just out of a bigger clip. And you're just scrubbing through to find what you like out of it. So it starts up, I did a solar flare on this one even, I think. Well, there's a better shot I should have used. You never know when you're editing through. Um, here's what I used, just right here. I had a little flare I could have used with a down shot, but I didn't like the movement. I wanted to stagnate to each his own on what you're gonna put in. So like what you like on composition is you, but the little movement up, you could take it out really easily and then you don't have to have it in there at all. But I kind of like it moving into that camera pulling into her. So I leave those. Um, again, personal preference. This one's another nice shot of her moving, but I don't need her walking that much, I don't think. So I take it out. This one I really like with the flag in the sun, it pulls down. And this shot I actually trimmed earlier because I don't like seeing signs that aren't time period if it's an old building and the smoking sign would have ruined it for me. So I clip out. Again, this isn't like a great spot. I didn't shoot it well. I run and gun, sweaty, dehydrated, tired, and just throwing the camera around. And you could still somehow make an edit out of these little clips with very minimal need for high editing power. Um, and then it brings us to hot screen. So this would be like an intro video if I had to think of it into a bigger one or just a social media pull up. Um, I already pulled in a video's song from earlier. This takes hours, if not days, if you don't know music. Uh, if you don't have a song that you like for a video, God help you. Um, another thing is copyright. You go and put a song on your video and it's Lil Wayne or something, you're having an issue because YouTube takes it down. The biggest thing I could say for music is go to a bar and meet a musician. I didn't do this because I was a musician. I just know a bunch of them, but they're all pretty friendly people. They like to drink, buy them a beer, say, I really like your music. Do you mind if I use it in a video? And then just meet more people through them. And you're going to find so much music that's not licensed. You can help out somebody else because you get them exposure. Um, and I just have a friend of mine's song that he recorded and sent me. And I just throw it in all the time. I use him on almost every video I do. I end up using him. Um, these also, I believe, are slowed down. 
I tend to do that quickly is I go and put these at like 70 if I can. And then it slows and butters up a little bit of the footage. Um, just to get rid of some, oh, I'm actually gonna leave the audio in that. See, this is awesome. This is where I mess up the edit in the middle of the Zoom call. Um, audio is the next step. I like to leave audio in as much as possible if it's not bad. And that's where we lead into a second of me not sharing my screen so I could stare at you all and tell you, can you see me? I can see you. Bring lots of gear everywhere. Don't leave stuff at home. Video sucks because of that. Um, I have my normal camera backpack is this big and this is like with nothing in it. It fits my whole body. It is gigantic. I have a drone. I have a wildlife lens. I have a wide, I have a medium, I have a mid medium zoom. I don't know if any of those are the right words for any of those, but I have so much gear in there with a drone on the top, a stabilizer if I can fit it on my weekend trips. I use minimal of that ever, but I've had so many times where I wish I had it and I didn't bring it that I was really pissed. So if you bring stuff with you, um, you're much better off having it if you bought it already. Yeah. Your drone sitting in your closet doesn't get you the drone shot. Like you're gonna get a bad mood like I got in this video and you're gonna not use it, but having it is gonna help you out so much more. Um, Cause I didn't have any drone shots of here, which would have been awesome cause it's a beautiful little city. Instead, Gee. Dave, do you have a GoPro? I do. I have a multiple GoPros that I hate. Um, yeah. Not because they're bad cameras, but because they're so easy to just run around with that I end up with hours of footage and then I'm overwhelmed and I don't ever edit them. Okay. That's the hardest thing for me. Um, and that's the shooting with a purpose. It's probably the best thing you could take when you're going into videos is find any purpose. If it's, I want to make sure I want to see Linda having a good day today. That's what you're going to go and film. If you're filming Linda, have a good day. Um, if your purpose is to learn how to do in camera transitions, you're looking for something different to go and try and do these transitions or anything and use transitions of them. I'm not the best at it. I try. Um, there's probably many of people who could tell you much better advice on how to do in camera transitions as well. But for the most part, it's best to just do it. Um, you can watch a lot of videos, but your best bet is just go. Is there um, a is there a lens that's your go to lens for doing filming, or are you using just anything that you happen to have on your camera? That's, ooh, that's I could show you. I can. I've made videos. I don't know if I could share them on here through this on my iPhone that were like some of my favorites. Um, but then iPhones go out of step. I personally, right now, I'm using these Tamron wide and mid-range zooms that are awesome. They're 2.8s. It's a 17 to 28 and a 28 to 75. And they're like a macro lens. So in that shot there, I didn't have the wide wide. I only had the 75 to 28. And it, it's an awesome lens. It's cheap. Again, cheap compared to all the other ones. I think Sigma came out with one that's not much more. And if Sigma's your go, then that's your go. These are super light. It doesn't extend out of the zoom and it's just perfect for a little mirrorless camera like I have, um, which is the A7S II is what I'm shooting most of the video on when I can. I have an A7R2, A7S1, a bunch of other cameras I never touch, but so, that one's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, Susan has a question. She wanted to ask you if you could explain the slowing down of the video to 70%. Okay, so I slow it down because it gives it a little bit creamier look um, here. So when I custom it down to 70, uh, and I'm only doing 70 because my footage is shot in, uh, if I could show it here. Oh, that's a big mouse. Uh, I was only in 60p. I have no idea the mathematical reasoning I have no number if 70 is right, but when I was looking earlier and fiddling with it, it didn't blend wrong. If that makes sense. So if I slow this down a lot to like 25, right? So if I had 120, I could do it down here. If I don't, it gets really weird and glitchy and it's sort of like a shaky video. If you keep it at 70, yeah. it can still seem creamy enough. And in Final Cut, what I can do is I can actually, I'm not gonna do it now because the processing would take forever because I have a slow 
old computer because I'm cheap, like I said. Um, you can go and change uh, video quality, optical flow, and it kind of smooths it out a little bit. It doesn't fix it amazingly, but it gets the job done again. For something like this, it's just going to be a social media post. So can you... Um... Oh, I lost you guys. How about some basic settings? Like, okay, I'm a beginner. Am I not screen sharing right now? You are not. Oh, I was like talking about the screen as I was moving it. That's where I was wrong. Yeah, there we go. So as I'm up here, this is what I was showing is the clip gets, if you can see sort of glitchy and too slow. Mm -hmm. That's the only reason I got on to 70. But 70, as you watch it, it sort of draws it out a little bit and also helps the audio surprisingly. Um, I still fix the audio a lot more than I have right now. Also, that clip's way too long. So I have to fix it because I can't let it be. This one shouldn't be there. This one should be like right here. And then it should come out instead up right there. Yeah, so straight in and then a pop out. And it just goes that little up. And the movement's real subtle now. It's not a big move if I slowly go over it. 70 helps everything kind of feel more natural because when you're shooting on a video camera, I've noticed I'm seeing stuff way too quick for the human eye or I'm seeing it unnaturally. I kind of like a little bit of blur, a little bit of I guess, haze, because that's what I see. I don't see everything crystal. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, again, preference, maybe. Um, when I bring it down to 70, I guess it, it doesn't add a lot of time to the video, but it does slow up a little bit of the shots. The smoke gets a little bit better on the steam shot. Not much. On that audio. So like some of this audio is still, again, that, that's like the hardest part. So you gotta just go and play with it and make sure your background doesn't white noise over you. And these I could tell are. Um, do you have to apply the 70 to the entire no. uh, video or just pieces or whatever? I, I did it to the entire video because it's just easier right now. Mm -hmm. um, just going to custom after highlighting all, but you can go to one on here. Okay. And okay. I could just make one, you know, really quick. I can make one really slow. Okay. It's just pull and, pull and go on these. Um, yeah, so it, it's you, you, you can do a lot of crazy retiming too. So like in Final Cut, say I wanted to use this ending clip, but I wanted to move more. I would pull it up a little bit more and then you can go and hit um, the hot key is Apple key or I don't know, this one's shift B, which is like a, a time blade. And then that can speed up just that front one. It'll vamp into it. And it sort of makes that pull up quicker. And then you don't notice it as much, but again, that's just more timing and more stuff. For this, it would be a quick throw up video. I wouldn't focus too much on that because I, I, I like the cuts enough clean how they are. Um, but you're always, you're always able to do a lot more slow up and speed down for the video if you're doing in camera transitions. Like this one, I could speed up that little first bit, make it longer and speed it up. Um, and sometimes people will like that so you get the reveal all the way out. And all I would do is again, shift B and I go and I speed it up with uh, just like a quick and easy tool of it. And then when I speed up the front, you'll see it pulls in nice and quick, I hope. So there's not like a long pause on the pole. The pole's now a transition opposed to the yeah. slow-mo like the rest of the clip. So you can play with the speeds of everything. Um, 70, again, I don't have a mathematical reason. I just say play it safe when I'm playing out of 60p and 24. Um, everything here is only going to be in 24 when I edit it down. It was shot in 60, so it has double the frame rates to play with, at least in a little bit. So there's a question about what's your, what length video is, is optimum? Um, depends on your purpose. Again, what are you shooting it for? If this was like a story post, it's almost too long for me. But 20 seconds is a nice, easy, throw it on Instagram, throw it on a daily post. I, I would make videos almost every day if I was out doing stuff. Um, and then if you want to do a longer format, I would stick to three to five. Like I, I mean, you can go make a 20 minute documentary and you're probably gonna blow my mind and I'm gonna say you're an amazing filmmaker. So there's not like a rule to it. But you, you, if you're just trying to make a video, make it quick. The world of uh, TikTok or Vine or whatever other world of video is very quick cuts, mm -hmm. quick, clean, fast video that just gets the point across. That, that's always my go-to. I, I don't really want a long formatted thing that 
who's sitting on one shot and I got to rely on making the perfect shot for every one of these long shots. Um, yeah, it really depends. I don't know how else to answer other than like. No, I think that's a good, I think that's a good answer. It really depends on what, what you're trying to do with it and you know, your audience and the, the purpose of it. That makes yeah. sense. If you're just getting into editing and you don't have an audience that you're trying to make it for other than yourself, you just want to learn how to edit mm -hmm. 15 seconds, make a 15 second video, but make it a good 15 second video. Like this is an all right at best 22 second video. Right. So like I can, I would have cut it way quicker. Probably I would have not done the slow-mo as much prefer that I would have shot it in 120 so I could slow it down more so mm -hmm. I can bring in shots and do stuff. But again, I was in a really bad state of mind filming all this. And I can reiterate, this was like a horrible day for me, but I got a cool little video out of it in my mind. So is it processing now so we can see it or is this something? Yeah. Like yeah. I could play it over full screen here. I'm pretty yeah. sure that's yeah. why I did it earlier. So it'd be quick. So yeah. I, the video song again no purpose to it the last line kind of goes cool with it um i moved one clip to the back here that was the start because in theory this would be like the intro video to a blog or this would be the intro video to a longer format hot springs video that i never made so here's the intro <laughs> okay. And that would be it. Again, it would okay. keep going along. I could probably make another three minutes of video for my summer trip with this being the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, and I probably will do that now that I've done this, honestly. Um, so, but yeah, again, it's just a short format. These are the way to do it. This is how you learn how to edit opposed to trying a big project right away. And I want to make a, a, a statement here. It seemed a little glitchy because we're on Zoom and the, we're dealing with bandwidth. So you're going to post this on your Instagram, correct? 100% will. Okay. And that way you guys can kind of see it more of a, a finished piece. But I just wanted to kind of let people know it's, it's, it was glitchy on my end. And I know it's a bandwidth issue, not that it was a, his video, his Thanks yeah. for covering for me. It's a horrible video. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty terrible, but yeah, really. <laughs> Go check out his, uh, his, you can put it on Instagram? Is that where you Yeah, I'll put it on Instagram, probably. That, that works. I, yeah. I'd actually like to show you, what I, what I tend to do then after that, I don't want to do it now because it takes so long to do. Sure. I go and color stuff a little bit, and, and I just want to point out that is a key. If you're in actually one of these programs that has the ability to color correct or do any LUT adding, yeah. It is so easy just to add them in if I knew where to press my mouse, but I'm hiding it with my head. So I added no LUTs to this one. It had to be this one. Uh, no, I had LUTs on them. They're all gone. Oh, here we go. This one has LUTs. So has what? A LUT, but they're not on. I had to do this all. All right, this is going to be fun. Here we go. So if you're in this, what you do is you hit a new pom compound clip. Um, Again, that's a little easy to do, but I don't know how to explain it quickly. Um, but then in Final Cut, there's a custom LUT loader. I have downloaded LUTs that are all free. I've never once paid for one. Everything I have, someone gave me for free or I downloaded for free. I put a few of them on and I have a few go-tos. And that's what you find with LUTs. And so a LUT goes and changes the color. Science is a smart way to say it, I'm sure, for... Mm -hmm all the video. So when I click on it, you can see it instantly pops something up. Um, I go and add a little bit of tone to it. And you see this looks horrible as I go through it. Um, but then it has sliders and you make it look much better by putting way less of everything always. It just pops your video on its own, opposed to you having to like go and color everything. So I go and play with them until I get right about where I want with Tone. So that one, I think. So this one's like a haze. It sort of adds in a little bit of a tone if it's loading, but it's not. I love bandwidth. This is my computer. It has nothing to do with bandwidth. It's just RAM. Um, what does LUT stands for? What does that mean? 
Uh, light utilization technology. I have no idea. I just made that up. I'm sorry. <laughs> Look up table. That's that's what it is. Look up table. Thank you. Look up table. <laughs> you use them in Lightroom and other photography and video based settings, and I have no clue other than they do fun things in the video. Um, and that's that's I guess the nutshell of everything here is just play with it. You're gonna find something that looks cooler. Um, like here, I don't know if I like her skin tone, so I'd probably take it down. But it like brings out a little bit, like so this scene. If I go and turn off all of them, you can see it just gives you a little bit more tone to your video. This one's blue and way blown out in the indoor stuff. On the solar flare stuff, it doesn't do too much, but it works. Sort of pops out the whites. I would do that before I post it. So when you see me post it, it's going to have some of this done to it, but not exactly that. Again, I'm going to have to take a long time on that because I suck at doing that quickly. Everything else I do pretty quickly. That stuff takes me a while. Um, there's also color wheels you can go and play with that I can't get to because this is in the way. Um, color wheels help the same way with color correcting where you're just going to go in a compound file and you're going to go play with whatever you want to with it. Again, I don't want to get into that now because that will take hours. Right, you're right. That's a, uh, I'm sure there's someone who can do color correcting for their, uh, their happiness hour and it would do way more justice than me. <laughs> yeah, that's actually on my wish list of having someone come and explain that to me a little bit more. Yeah. Look up table. Rob who is coming in clutch, man, who Yeah. Guys, if you don't know Rob who is go and follow Rob Hoobis. Hoobis Yo is the man. Um, you guys, yeah, awesome. yeah, and I'm gonna I'm gonna plug him while he's still here in the room. Uh, Rob Hoovis is is gonna be our speaker, I believe November. I don't know now. Let me look, but he is gonna be our speaker. So if you're into lightning and time lapse, he's gonna be here and and he's gonna he's gonna teach me some stuff. He's here on the 11th, November 11th. So um, check him out. Um, all go. right, what else do you have, Danny? All right, here's a motivational speaker coming back out. Um, the biggest thing that I'd have to say that has to go along the theme of, of dealing with chaotic stuff, you are never prepared for what's going to happen. And I mean that in every sense you're taking it. You are never going to be prepared. Um, you're going to bring two water bottles. You should have brought five. You're going to bring no water bottles, and you're going to die of thirst. It's a normal thing I've learned just from traveling. Prepare to be unprepared, and it sort of helps you work with what you have. Um, but that being said, be as prepared as possible by knowing what you have. So uh, I see a couple Tamron zoom lenses. Buy low aperture zoom lenses. I had a whole bunch of primes for a while. They were manual. I thought they were awesome. They shot really cool images. And then I realized how heavy they were, and they just were so limiting on a camera like this because when I take it off outside, I just got my sensor all dirty, and now I have all the spots. Like in that video, I have plenty of spots on my sensor, but I have a weird thing where I like them. Uh, most don't don't like them. It's bad to like them. Yeah. Um, bring enough water. Nika does have a question that is is kind of interesting. Do you? She wants to know: Do you always approach things from a video standpoint, or do you make a choice between video and still, and versus still? And that is a great question, Nika, because I had that experience this weekend when I was doing wildlife. Because I thought, if I don't take the shot, the still shot, that bird's going to leave, and I, I struggle. Yeah. So what's what's yeah, your thoughts on it? Wildlife is insane. So. If I'm doing wildlife, it's definitely choose or bring multiple cameras. Yeah. Um, multiple cameras gets expensive, again, cheap. I have the multiple cameras. I have them sort of set up for what they do best when I'm out there. So the A7S II, I have it at a high frame rate on its crop shot. It gets in really tight on the long lens. The R2 has a great resolution, so I can take photos with it and crop in, even if I don't get the right angle. But I battle with that same problem all the time. So you kind of have to choose. As much as I want to say you can do everything. Um, for a long time, I'd go out and I'd shoot, actually with Rob Hubis, who was in here, I'd go out with him like every weekend, multiple times a week. We'd go out for a while. Um, we've gotten quite busy in the past like months or so and year just from me traveling, him being busy with work because he's always doing stuff. He would take photos and I'd always go take photos with him. And he will tell you probably the same thing. He's a, he's a video guy. 
he, he did a lot of video. We got into photos sort of at the same time of let's take photos for Instagram. We started going out together and it was great. And we had a lot of adventure. We had a lot of growth on it. We learned a lot. And then, you know, I sort of stopped doing video. I, I went on a summer trip for the first time and didn't have a video after it. Um, I have me and Michi's entire relationship in video format, but I didn't shoot anything I liked because I focused on photos for Instagram. And I, it sounds bad, but that's that's like the battle I struggle with. So I, I haven't posted much on Instagram lately because I haven't wanted to. It's sort of a weird thing. I've, I've been focusing on going to shoot videos. I have a, a film I'm working on sort of in the drafting process now. So it's, it's sort of taking away. And I've just been doing a lot of hiking uh, to find wildlife and that is a bust kind of thing so a lot of times you go out and there's not much there um so it's hard to really come out with anything other than photos if there's nothing to make video of uh and that's sort of nice as i've been challenging myself to do that but i've 100 percent told myself to video i rob can attest to it I told rob one day i came up to him i go dude i'm i'm just gonna shoot video and we we're going out to shoot milky way so luckily i have a camera that can do that um, and I think it's a video that I never even posted of Rob out shooting Milky Way. It was great. I went out and shot an interview for a company with him in the same way out at night. And I, I love going out and doing Milky Way and stars and being in the middle of nowhere on a beach with my buddies. But I got sick of just taking photos because I realized I'd do nothing with them. I'm not really motivated to sell. I don't, I don't have any people asking most of the time. If they do, I'm way too friendly and I send them a file unless they call Amazon or something, right? So I figured I want to bring purpose back to my adventures because that's that's why I started doing any of this. I didn't really buy a camera to take photos or videos. I I bought it to show you what I wanted to go out and do. So like the key was to go and enjoy what I was doing and photo and video sort of took the sideline and then it took over and I lost sight of what I was shooting. And I had like these bad years of like not liking anything I did because I wasn't seeing stuff I wanted. I was seeing things that would look good on video and that sort of took away from it. So like if you can push yourself to do only video and don't worry about what you're going to shoot. Just do a video on anything you're doing. Um, I made a video of making a smoothie one morning at my house with my girlfriend and I loved it. It was like one of my favorite little edits I ever did. And it was a pointless video I'll never post. So maybe I posted it. I probably did. I probably posted it, but it's um, just stupid videos. Don't, don't think everything has to have a purpose to send to everybody. There's plenty that could be for you. Some of my favorite photos I'll never post because I don't think anyone will like them. They're not the go-to photo that everyone would think, oh, that's, that looks epic. No, that just looks cool to me because I memorized that moment. And that moment is what I'm taking the photo for. Yeah. Remember that part. Don't, don't ever lose that sight, I guess. There's a question in the chat that Susan is popping in there, which I, I love. And she wants to know, do you have any advice on a basic approach to video while moving? Like she's walking down a trail, you know, Stop. being stationary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Stop. That's what my biggest advice on that one. So are you, are you filming you or are you filming someone else? Are you just filming the trail? Um, I have, let me grab this. This is a huge tool that I use often. Um, trail or someone else. Okay, so if it's just the trail or someone else, so you have another person to film, you could do it handheld. And I would prefer it handheld. And what I do is I get low to the trail. There's usually little stringy grasses coming out over it. If you can, find it where you can see a cool trail part. Don't just shoot the trail. Go and find a cool part of the trail. Otherwise, you're going to have to do some magic and make it work with the shots. But the key is find cool trails. That's that's the point of it. You know, it's not about making the dumb trail look good, which I'm going to bite my tongue constantly because it is about making that dumb trail look good. <laughs> but the key is to go out and find a cool trail. If it zigs a little, you can use that turn as movement. And, and I'm going to show you the key to it all is your elbows have to be in. Everyone's out there doing this and they think I got more balance. Put your elbows in. If you can, get a strap onto your camera. And I'm going to show you this because someone showed me this. I think or what I, I was researching how to not bring a tripod because I carry a lot of gear and I didn't want a tripod, but I want to have a steady shot. And what you do is you just strap up your camera any which way, get it around your neck. It doesn't have to even be balanced around you. Again, my name's the side. But now you just added a point. This will be a nice steady camera. And you don't want to always turn this way. You want to kind of shift. Right? That's that's your key movement. If you're doing this the whole time, you're watering the grass. I, I have a friend uh, that I shoot with all the time that tells me that his name's Frank Geraces. 
I can't say his last name ever. I'm his friend for many years. I can never say his last name. Again, a horrible person I am, but he's on uh, F. Gracie's photos. I'll add it in somewhere here or just go look at my Instagram. All of the posts are from him that tag me because we're always out. He takes photos when I don't. Um, he says, don't water the grass. Don't just spray everything that you see. Find something, follow it. Find something, go around it. You know, use your motions this way. And it's, it's not a lot of motion. It's not all about this. It's, it's about the little subtle stuff. You know, so if my hand's here, it's going to look great because it's going past my hand. If that's too much hand, go above it, look down at it. Um, if you're on a trail, no tripod. That's my best advice. Stop and let them walk past you. Ask them to wait 10 seconds, go set up, have them walk towards you. Don't try and see all of them. No one needs to see all of you. You're seeing me now, but my legs, who knows where they are? You know, you don't need that. You can only show my feet on the trail. That's what your goal is. Shoot the trail. Don't shoot. Me smiling and walking because people suck at acting. I suck at acting. You're not going to look natural. Just tell them to walk. They won't even know what you're shooting. You're looking at the ground, and then now you got their feet walking through a puddle, hitting a branch, something. Um, that's that's the best thing if I had to think of that. Like, that's yeah, and elbows in, elbows in. That's the best thing. If you don't have the tra the the straps, just elbows in, and you're gonna. It sort of doesn't let you move as much on most of the axes without trying. All right. Any last words of wisdom? Like three things that we need to, three words that you want to share with us. Keep it simple. Keep it short. And clean transitions. I don't know. That's Be good. happy. Be happy. <laughs> That's good. So I'm going to throw this, throw this out there. Um, one of the reasons that I know Danny is because I found him on Instagram and I was going to Chicago, so I was looking at tags, like I came across your page, and then I always like to see who I'm looking at, and in his bio, which, by the way, it's still there, oh. deep to chit chat, so if you have any questions that oh. he covered tonight, and maybe he spoke too fast, or he used terminology that we, we just can't pick up, or we don't know what he was talking about, send him a message, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna get you to to reply back to them. Oh, I'm pretty long winded. If you can't tell, I will talk for days. Um, and I would love to help you out whatever I can. If I can't, I might know someone who can help you out too. Yeah. yeah. Always nice. That's awesome. Um, let me wrap up with you, Danny, and just say thank you. Thanks for doing this. I know this is not something that you normally do, but you were very generous and, and, and jumped in and said, sure, we'll do it. And, and you did. And I think that you've offered a a couple of things that I hadn't thought about. Hopefully. Probably <laughs> a lot more. I'm but to listen to. Yeah, it was fun to listen to you and, and kind of, I don't know, it's it's just another thing that I, I want to learn. And it just seems like it's there's so much to learn in every little project that you want to do. So yeah, yeah. I know what you mean. I know exactly what you mean. <laughs> and remember, turn your phone. I Never will. shoot portrait. I didn't, I didn't know. That was, that was my, you know, the, anyway. Oh, I, 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 I still do it, don't worry. <laughs> I'm definitely going to get better. So, all right, Danny, thank you so much for, for doing this for us. Guys, next week, Marin County's newest real estate photographer, Stephen Magner, will be here to share his ideas on how you can create visual storytelling in real estate and interior design photography. So until next Wednesday, go out and create something beautiful. And I hope that we will see you next week.